And now we're going to hear about getting the air out, the marine exhaust system. And Jorge Lang of D'Angelo Marine Exhaust, he's traveled the world diagnosing and solving these problems for on yachts and manufacturing facilities. He's head of business development at D'Angelo, and I know how important they are because over the years, I've signed a lot of yacht management checks to D'Angelo Marine Exhaust. He works with yacht builders looking to improve their designs as well as assisting captains and engineers with solutions for existing systems. He has handled a myriad of issues ranging from the do-it-yourselfer who needs an exhaust system on his own boat to the 300-foot mega yacht with a dirty hull caused by, a, by exhaust from a generator. He earned his MBA at Nova Southeastern University, taught bachelor and master level courses as an adjunct professor. His passion? as many of our presenters, is boating and fishing. He's fished everywhere from the canals of Miami to Australia, but he says he prefers the waters of South Florida. So let's hear a nice round of applause for Jorge Lang of D'Angelo Marine Exhaust. You heard some of the presenters and they did a really good job. I think I've got really the difficult one as presenting after a great lunch. So uh, we'll give it our best shot here. Uh, as Bob said, my name is George Lang. I'm with D'Angelo Marine Exhaust. And before I start the presentation, I want to talk to you a little bit about D'Angelo Marine Exhaust. This year, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary. Um, we are the premier exhaust company in the world, not just here in the States or those other guys a little bit north of here. Um, I want to ask a question, how many, before today, how many people have heard of D'Angelo Marine Exhaust? That's pretty good. Um, before today, or before the next five seconds, how many people think there's still a D'Angelo at D'Angelo Marine Exhaust? <laughs> <clears throat> Wrong. Uh, for, since 2004, there has not been a Mr. D'Angelo at D'Angelo Marine Exhaust. It's solely owned uh, by a gentleman named Bob Montes, who happens to be over there. He has the same haircut. We go to the same barber. Um, and we basically turned a mom and pop shop company into basically the best premier exhaust company in the world. The reason I say that is because we are worldwide, even though we're based 20 minutes from here. Um, we have worked on vessels everywhere, Italy, Greece, Fiji, you name it, we've been there. We're only limited to the world. We haven't done any boats on the moon yet. Okay. Um, one of the reasons also is because all of our welders are certified by the American Welding Society. And that's a big deal. Uh, if you look at some of the welds on some of the boats that you, uh, you're working on, some of those welds look okay. Some of them are fantastic. Some of them look like they've been done by some little guy in Hialeah if you guys know where Hialeah is. So, so it'll vary quite a bit. Some of the work we do are for people like you, for captains, for boat owners, in helping them fix issues that they have with the exhaust. Another big portion is with new builds, whether it be a premier builder in Wanchese, North Carolina, I won't mention names today, um, or military and commercial vessels as well. In the late 90s, we did a lot of work for the US Coast Guard for the 47 and 87 foot motor lifeboats. Currently, we're doing the exhaust system for the new 154 foot fast response cutter being built in Louisiana. Again, I won't mention the name. You guys can look it up if you like. Um, that's what makes us so damn good. Part no words, okay? So let's see if this little clicker here works. Oh, wrong clicker. There we go. So some of the topics I'm going to cover today. Why is an exhaust system an important issue to a vessel? Before I continue on, um, I noticed that uh, Ian and Mark from Cummings mentioned exhaust systems 13 times. Rich mentioned it eight times. So apparently it is a big deal, even though it may not be a big issue to you guys yet. Uh, we're going to talk about different types of exhaust systems, components of an exhaust system, how they're designed on a new build, and you guys, as a yacht broker, what should you look for? We'll get into that a little bit as well. Okay. Um, mention also what if they're soot on the side of the hull. We'll talk a little bit about that as well, and then we'll answer any questions. 
If you guys have a question as I talk, raise your hand. We could address it at that moment. Like some of the other presenters said, it's fresh. We could tackle it at that moment. The importance of an exhaust system. Basically, the engine's ability to, to exhale. We mentioned uh, back pressures by some of the presenters earlier. Back pressure is basically the engine's ability to exhale. Say we are in good enough shape to run a mile and we're breathing hard, and now we exhale through a straw. You gotta find that difficult, okay? Same with an engine's exhaust. It needs to meet the engine manufacturer's back pressure requirements. And even though they are roughly within the same range, each one's gonna be a bit different depending on which engine you have on the boat. Okay. Properties of a good functioning system. As I mentioned, the back pressure, it's gotta be within the engine's uh, specifications. The exhaust temperature is within range, and this is a big deal. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen boats where the blue hose might be caramelized colored, or some of the fiberglass that's beautifully white is also turning brown. Uh, that could be an issue as well that needs to be addressed, okay? Is it sized properly? Again, this goes back to the issue of back pressure, and just making the system bigger does not make it better. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, and it's gotta look good, guys. I mean, come on, if you go to a boat that you're trying to sell, and it looks like the exhaust belongs on a freighter going from here to Bimini, it's not gonna help you sell the boat. Okay. A Little bit about the types of exhaust systems. Basically, three types. One of them is dry stack, and you can see the exhaust right over here. And that's typically, like it says there, on the larger yachts and the trawlers. Uh, think about the Nordhavens. Typically, they have their exhaust stack right around there. And I believe this is a Nordhaven, okay? And you see a lot on the commercial vessels. Commercial vessels being cruise ships, the freighters that are docked right offshore, they'll have it as well. Wrong button. There we go. Right. The other one is a transom outlet. And this is typical on a sport fish boat. The exhaust will go... Oops. How do I go back? There we go. The exhaust will run from the engine through a muffler and out the back of the vessel. Here's a representation of a company we're working with right now. I'd love to tell you who it is, but I can't. Uh, you see the exhaust here going through the muffler and out the back of the boat. And this is how we work to design a system for a builder to make sure that everything is going to function properly so there are no surprises at the end. The other type of uh, exhaust system is an underwater exhaust, okay? The exhaust will go from the engine out the bottom of the boat, and it was also very important to have a bypass on going either out the transom, or sometimes I'll put a hole right here, okay? If that engine's producing X amount of gas, there's gonna be a column of water between here and here. So as that engine has low gas flow, for it to work, you'd have to blow that much water, that deep, to get that exhaust going out the bottom of the boat. The bypass function is to basically get the exhaust gases and run them out the back, okay? Now somebody asked a question earlier about uh, underwater exhaust. He's gone? Yeah, okay. Um, the other important thing about the underwater exhaust is this little thing here. And if you guys ever done uh, a survey with a boat out of the water, this will have as many shapes are as there are floating boats out there. Each one's gonna be a little different. Some work, some don't. Okay. Talk a little about the, the components of the exhaust system. Uh, that's the right button, okay. First one is the flange connection. This is where we're gonna connect the exhaust system to the turbo. Now, each flange is gonna be a little bit different depending on the engine manufacturer and the actual engine type. For example, Cummings may have various different flanges depending on the engine. Caterpillar will have different flanges depending on the model of that same engine. For example, a C18 1015 horsepower will have a different flange than the 1150. Right. Another important thing to see here is this little guy right there. Anybody know what that is? Very good. I'll throw you a cookie, but I don't have one. Um, 
the important thing about this fitting is that it should be measured at this point. And I'll go to another slide in a little bit. I think the next one I'll show you why. This is the absolute best place to measure back pressure. Okay? If you measure another place, you can get a false reading, both positive and negative. Okay? Here's the routing of the exhaust. And again, here's the turbo, here's the mixer, here's where the exhaust is gonna run through. Now, there are certain manufacturers of exhaust systems that would put the, the parameter fitting right there. So, if the fitting's right there, what type of reading will we have? Higher or lower than the actual back pressure? <clears throat> Sorry, low. Okay, think about the gas flow. The gas is flowing here, they hit the top of this elbow, and they come down. So you'd have a higher pressure here, but a lower pressure there. Okay, so always look to see where that parameter fitting is. If it's there and it meets back pressure, it'll meet back pressure, but it may not be the actual back pressure of that exhaust system. Yeah. The other component is the mixer tank, and that's where we finally get to the point where we could introduce the exhaust gases to the raw water flow. Okay, now this portion here, we call it the diffuser. Think about, it goes by different names, it could be called the shower can, um, here's where the magic happens. Here's where we inject the water into the gas. Now you notice that in this particular system, there are more holes on the top than there are on the bottom. Okay, reason being is the angle of installation. Okay, and that's very important in the design of an exhaust system. So that when the boat is running at lower RPMs with less water, you're gonna force that water to go up here to really properly cool that exhaust. Different options on an exhaust system. Um, one of them is the finish. This mixer, let me go back one more. This area here is gonna be exposed and it could be a matte finish, which is the natural color of the metal. It could be a white powder coat finish. And if you get metal and polish the hell out of it, you'll have a mirror polish finish. So again, back to customer preference as to what they would like. Um, the insulation, got to be insulated. The, we got to work on making sure someone is not dumb enough to touch a hot piece of metal, but they can go ahead and touch the engine, no big deal. Go ahead and bring your hand on the engine. So the, the two main types of insulation we have are blanket insulation, and the other one is one that's called hard coat. I'm sure you guys have seen both of those examples before. If you haven't, you can go to the expo area, and you can see them there on our C-Clean system. And then material options. Typically, an exhaust system coming from the Orient, not to pick names here or there, they like to use 304 stainless, and that's not the best material to use. The standard is 316L stainless, and if you wanted to upgrade to a better material, then you would go with Inconel. And Inconel's a trade name, it goes by different uh, names, and it's 316L stainless with a higher nickel content. So you have a better resistance to corrosion. Design criteria on a new build. You know, what are you looking for? Number one is space constraints. Um, when we're working on a design on a new build, usually we're the last ones to come into place. You're gonna put the pumps in here, generator goes there, and oh, we forgot about the exhaust. So now we gotta figure out how to route that exhaust in whatever area we have left to work with, okay? Again, engine requirements. What's the back pressure uh, allowed that we've gotta meet? Okay. Are we using underwater exhaust? Are we doing transom? Are we going up the stack? All these things take into consideration in the design of a system. Okay. Attenuation. Uh, Rich talked about noise. Attenuation basically is how quiet do you want that boat to be. It could be silent if you wanted to. However, we need to have room for a good size muffler in that design. Typically, they say, hey, I want it real quiet, but you get about this much space to make it quiet. So it's, it's always a balance of one thing to another, okay? What does a customer want? Does he want to buy the better material and not worry about the system failing within X number of years, okay? Does he want it to look super sweet or does he just want it to work? Tell us what you want, we'll make it happen. All right, for all you people that sell and buy boats, okay, what to look for in a brokerage vessel. Okay. 
First one to look for is soot in the engine room. I assume you guys have, have oops, sorry about that. I assume you've, ever, you've seen this every once in a blue moon. Okay, which is, yeah. Okay, this particular vessel, they had a problem with the dry mufflers. We pulled them out, and this is what we found. If you're buying or selling a boat, this should raise a big flag. Probably got a leak. Okay. How loud is that boat? Okay. If it's really loud, you know, you want to buy a loud boat unless you want your boat to be like your Harley Davidson. Short of that, it's going to be a noisy boat. Yeah. Hose connections. If you're on a boat and you see that, you've got a problem. Okay. If you've got rust on a connection, if you see salt build up here, you got a problem. Okay? The insulation, like I mentioned, we've got to take care of making sure that that exhaust is well insulated. If you're on a vessel and you see this, that's not good. Okay? Silver blankets, by the way, will have a tendency to do this after a while. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that on some of the boats that you're working on. What will happen is the silver blankets look really good, but after a while they're going to start to caramelize and they're going to start to flake off. Okay, uh, we offer blankets silver, black, and gray. White also, but white is not as popular as it used to be. Okay, again, the importance to you guys on a boat. Okay, has anybody ever seen an exhaust issue come up on a survey? Just one, two, three. All right, you've seen it pop up. Okay, um, again, it's got to be addressed. Okay whether it comes up from the buyer or the seller or the broker. Okay. Best thing you can do is find a reputable exhaust company. Oops, sorry. Reputable exhaust company. <laughs> okay. uh, to basically give you a survey and give you an estimate as to what it's going to cost to fix that problem. Okay. With that, you can now Negotiate whether you're the buying or the selling broker. If it's going to cost X amount to take care of it, now you've got a negotiating tool. Again, not knowing if you're the buyer or the selling broker. I'm not a broker. I never played one on TV. So, okay. And the vessel's appearance. Okay. Again, when I say vessel appearance, you know, does the exhaust look good? Or what about the side of the boat? That's my little intro to the next part. Anybody ever seen that? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Good. All right. So this is a sign of a generator that's got a little soot issue. Okay. Now, is it okay? Oops. Keep doing it. Pressing the wrong button here. Okay. I'm doing it again. Uh oh. Rich had the same problem earlier. Okay. Anyway, that's the dirty hole. Actually, I think I'm, pressing, I'm waiting for the next slide to come up, okay? The other problem with a generator that has an issue is that. Has anybody ever seen that on, on a boat? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Who's this guy who keeps saying, oh, yeah? I've got to talk to you. All right, we'll talk later, all right? The other major problem with a generator that has a dirty exhaust is, oh, it's coming up. I'm sorry. The soot on the side of the hull. Um, I was on my boat and I saw this on a really big boat, somewhere at 220 to 250 feet. So obviously it indicates that the exhaust from the generator is pretty dirty. So if you see that, you know it's got to be a problem that needs to be addressed. Or maybe they just cleaned it and you don't know. Okay. The third problem is her, no, not her, the smell, okay? I've, I've been on vessels where the guy says, man, this boat stinks, what can you do? So those are three main issues with the generator exhaust that needs to be addressed, okay? So what to look for in a soot filtration system? Well, first of all, space availability. If it's a new build, pretty easy to tackle. Since it's a new build, you could negotiate and find room for things here and there. On a retrofit, you could also find the room. Okay, there are systems out there that are huge, hundreds of parts to try to make it work. It's not going to work. Okay. 
Is it ultra low maintenance? Okay. Uh, how often do you need to clean that filter? Or do you? Yes, it's a pitch. Okay. Ease of refitting. Again, going back to the space availability. How easy is it to convert your dirty generator into one that basically is warm air coming out the side of the vessel? Will it be within class compliance? Now, certain vessels are ABS, Alloys, or GL, or DMV, and on and on and on. Can that system keep the boat to class? Okay. A proven technology. Is this something that someone is going to try and say, hey, yeah, it works. Promise it works. Well, may not. Uh, the best way is if you're talking to a reputable company, ask them to... Uh, Give you the name of engineers that have that system already on there and talk to them. They're not going to lie to you. Well, I'm not either, but these are the guys that, that have the system and know if it works or doesn't work. Okay. Is it turnkey? Is someone going to sell you a box of parts or is it going to be a complete retrofit from beginning to end? Okay. And is it going to add value to the vessel? Okay. Um, when it comes to value, the best example that I give to... Uh, to boat builders, I'm sorry, not builders, to captains and engineers is, if you were gonna buy tires for your wife, would you buy the cheapest tires or would you buy really good tires? Unless you want an ex-wife, okay? So it's the value that you're gonna put in the vessel. Thank you, any questions? Yes, sir. Can you talk a little bit more about the filtration or scrubbers like hug units? Okay. Uh, there are companies out there that will sell you a filter, and they will tell you as long as your gas temperatures are high enough and you burn clean fuel, it's going to work. Well, the issue is what if it doesn't? And typically a generator will not produce the temperatures needed to keep that filter doing what it needs to do. Um, our sea clean soot filtration system, we have a heater that heats up those exhaust gases so the filter could do what it needs to do. Um, if you guys have been to the expo area, you'll see a, a mock-up of our system, and I'll be happy to walk you through the system, let you know how it works. Anything else? Questions? Yeah, hi. You, when you were showing the generator exhaust blow by or smoke and that, isn't it, are you saying that it can all be corrected with exhaust, or can it also be a problem with, you know, contaminated fuel, bad injectors, or something like that? Are you saying you can correct everything with exhaust modification? Can't fix an engine with a soot filtration system. We can get rid of the soot, we can get rid of the sheen, we can get rid of the smell, but if your engine is producing a lot of oil, can't take care of that. We could address some oil, but again, it's mostly an engine issue. Yes, to another question, if you don't mind. Are, is the Angela working on any of these, uh, what's the proper name for reburners or to, to get to the next tier on EPA where they're reburning the exhaust gases uh, in the engine room through some uh, type of uh, combustion chamber? Are you doing those kind of things? Uh, no, not, not to reburn the fuel. That's uh, EGR, exhaust gas recirculation. We're not doing anything like that. We are working on developing a system for the NOx reduction that's going to be required by IMO, and that's something that we are working on. Hopefully, by the end of the year, we'll have something available. Now I've got a question uh, about your dry stack setup. Set uh, question number one is where does the exhaust water go uh, as far as exhausting out? How does it get out of there without going in the exhaust? Obviously, it's a dry system. And how do you insulate the, the, the distance from the engine all the way to the stack uh, and keep things from catching on fire? Okay. Typically, that's going to be the involvement of the builder. Uh, the water coming out of the heat exchanger is going to go through certain systems. From there, it's going to basically be dumped overboard. Um, as far as the rest of the stack, it's got to be insulated. And it's got to be insulated. Also, it's got to be uh, separated somehow to keep the vibration from being transferred over to the hull side. Any other questions? Well, thank you, George. All right, thank you. It's great. <laughs> Good